Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can migrate your ASP.NET Core 2 2.1 or 2.2 REST API to an ASP.NET Core 3.0 REST API. The changes are quite a few and there are quite uh, the fundamental changes on how things work between 2.2 and 3.0 but we'll just take it easy, explain what has changed and then make those changes for you. Keep in mind my API is a REST API that has a database using uh, NT framework. So this covers several of the things you probably will have. It's just impossible to cover everything, however. So if you have any questions on how to do something particular that I didn't show, just comment down below and please subscribe for more content like this. On a side note, this video is being recorded uh, on July 10th, 2019. And as of now, the latest version of .NET Core 3.0 is the preview 6. However, Microsoft did say that RC should be coming any time now and uh, GA should be the end of September. So anything you see now should be still relevant even if you see this after the 3.0 release. I just wanted to future-proof my videos because I want to show some more advanced concepts in the next videos and I didn't want to render everything irrelevant by the time 3.0 comes out. So for that reason, I'm going to do this video now and continue with 3.0 preview until GA. But again, I don't expect any major API changes. So let's take it from the beginning and see how we can migrate our project. So first and foremost, we're going to go to the CS proj and we're going to edit the ASP.NET Core app version. We're going to change this to 3.0 and I'm going to save. And I'm actually going to do the same on the integrations test project. So find this version and change it to 3.0 and save. Several things have changed. First and foremost, this ASP.NET Core app uh, reference is not needed. We can remove this package reference because if our project is a web project and we're going to make our integration test uh, to be a web project, then this is just automatically uh, assumed that it's uh, there. And we're going to do the same for the main projects, uh, CS project. So I'm going to delete that as well. And I don't think we need the uh, Razor design project either. So we're going to delete that as well and just leave Swast backup. So now you can see we have a bunch of errors and uh, this is to be expected. Several things are not referenced. And that's because most of these packages like empty framework, identity and other packages like this that used to be in a single project now are separated into separate packages that you need to manually reference. So we're going to go ahead and just do that. Uh, first and foremost, let's add the uh, JWT bearer defaults and I'm going to use Rider's NuGet package finder thingy. As you can see, this is the latest package preview version. So I'm going to add this project and this goes away just like that. No change needed in the controller. That was everything we need to do there. The other thing is that we actually do need to add anti framework because it's just no longer there. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. It was the SQL provider. So I'm going to select that. Um, if you are doing this while in preview, please use the preview uh, 5 if you're using the in-memory database anywhere. Preview 6 is not quite stable. So I'm going to use the preview 5 just for the empty framework stuff. On top of that, I need to uh, refer to the identity empty framework project. So I'm going to do that right here. Again, 5 for anything identity related. Just skip 6. And these errors go away. So easy peasy. Another thing that's not included by default is the add default identity method. And this is because it's in a package called ASP.NET Core Identity UI. So I'm going to add that. Here we go. And as you can see, all the errors in our main tweetbook project are now gone. However, there is another change that we need to do. And it has to do with how MVC is registered. Uh, there's no particular change in the use MVC method here. We do, however, need to change an obsolete iHosting environment here, which now it's just a web host environment. So please make that change and just refer to the new package. And that should be it here. However, in the MVC installer, we can no longer use this add MVC uh, method, we have to uh, configure it differently. Before I show you that, let me just change this version to be 3.0. So that's done. So what we need to do here is say options and then options dot enable endpoint routing equals to false. And once this is done, our project should technically be running. However, 
I also want to show you how you can update to the latest Swashbuckle version. This is the Swagger stuff that we use to hit our API locally. So I'm going to find reference to this package and use this for 5RC. RC stands for Release Candidate, so I expect this to not change as well. So we're going to update this. And a lot of things will break now in our uh, MVC installer. As you can see, none of this now exists, but don't worry, we're going to fix this. First and foremost, this is no longer info. So I'm going to extract that, paste it here and check what it accepts. It wants an open API info, fine. And I'm assuming this should still have the same properties. So I'm going to just paste them here. And now this is just changed, open API info. The other thing that should no longer be the same is this API uh, key scheme. It probably has a different name. Yeah, it's called Open API Security Scheme, and everything looks to be the same. However, this in method is no longer a string. This is an enum now, so we need to say header, and the API key is no longer a string. It's an enum as well. You can also see that this security here is also not valid, and that's because this add security requirement method no longer accepts that it needs an api security requirement and this api security requirement in return accepts an open api security scheme but don't get confused this is not the same open api security scheme here this will be a different one and as this is a dictionary let me just represent it with one i'm gonna say empty list here or you could say empty array doesn't really matter and then say that this key as a reference, which is a new open API reference. And the values here is ID equals bearer because we have bearer token authentication. The type equals security scheme. And uh, that's it actually. We don't need to, to configure anything else. So just like that, our API is now updated to 3.0. Uh, there are a few uh, gotchas when it comes to empty framework changes if you are using a string as your key so not this one this is a good but if you're using a string like i'm doing here in the refresh token you need to actually specify that this needs to be database generated if it's an identity column so i have to add this for it to function properly and that's it for the main project now the other thing we need to fix is the integration tests there shouldn't be much to change here as well. However, the way the web application factory works now has fundamentally changed and it might worth having a separate video to that uh, later. So if you want that, please comment down below and I will create one. Uh, the change we need to do is, well, first and foremost, add the entity framework in memory database. So entity framework core dot in memory. And again, remember, if you're using this skip preview six, it's not functional. So this is now added. Uh, those methods were coming from a separate package as well, which was automatically referred to via the app reference that we had. Uh, this is no longer here, so I'm gonna have to manually add it. And this package is called Microsoft ASP.NET Web API Client. So I'm gonna add that. It's just convenient extension methods, really. That's all it is. And now our project has no other errors. However, if I go ahead and run those tests, it will not actually work. They won't pass. Uh, at least I think one of them will actually fail. The other one will pass. As you can see, this one passed, this one failed. And that's because this integration test class because it's using this in memory, the way the lifetime changed for the web application factory now, it won't just be created every time you do a create client, but it will reuse the same uh, database that we created in the previous test. This will say that, hey, this uh, is unauthorized and the error is happening because when we try to create another JWT, it will find out that our user is already registered and this will throw an error. So the way we can go about this is dispose the database every on every test execution. So the way we do this in next unit is we implement the I disposable interface. So I disposable here, and we uh, implement this method, the dispose method. This method will run on every execution of our tests. 
So if we want to do any cleanups, we would do it here. What I need is the service provider. So I'm going to say read only I service provider. And I'm going to get that from the app factory. If you remember, I said in the previous video that um, these services are only created when the create client method is invoked. This is no longer true. The server will be there and the services will be there even before you create this client. And that's because currently you can have multiple clients uh, and the server actually allows you to monitor them as well. But as I said, this is for another video. They made some really interesting changes here. So what I want to do here is say uh, services. Of course, I also have to update the MVC testing project. So let me just go ahead and do that. I totally forgot about that. It should be updated now. So with this updated, I can do dot services and get a service provider. And what I need to do with this is in the dispose method, I need to say using var service scope. And we're going to create a scope from this service provider. So create scope. And then say var context equals service scope dot service provider dot get service. And we're going to get the data context. And all we need to do is say context database ensure deleted. And this will ensure that everything in the database will be deleted per execution of the test. So if I just build this and I go ahead and run this, they should both pass. And now just to prove that everything is working, my database is deleted. So there's nothing in SMS. As you can see, if I just refresh that, yeah, it doesn't even exist. So if I now run this new Dollar Crow 3.0 API, hopefully it will all be working. As you can see, my graces will run. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and register first. So ASDF at ASDF.com, ASDF123 exclamation mark I'm going to execute that and yes indeed i'm getting the token the refresh token i'm going to use that token to now register so i'm going to say bearer and then the auth token and i should be able to get all the posts i expect none of them in here and indeed none of them are here i'm going to go ahead and create one just to see that this is working hello from dotnet core 3.0 this is now created and I have the ID. And if I hit this endpoint again, I should see it here. As you can see, it is here indeed. Same goes with the uh, get by ID method. And again, I can simply delete that. It all works, as you can see. So this is it for this video. Everything is now created and working in 3.0. It is preview, but as I said before, I don't expect any change in this between this preview and the major 3.0 change. Again, if there is any, I will pin a comment down below in the comments, so check that. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.